Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, you guys, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I am with the one of the most amazing lady shooters in the world, Ms. Maggie Reese Voigt. Thank you so much. I thank didn't you. know what name to use, so I just used all of the names. I like them all. I used I like all the all. names. You're on the Ruger shooting team, mm-hmm. but you are like, not only are you a beautiful woman, but you're an incredible Second Amendment advocate. Thank you. And you're an incredible shooter. Like, you're legitimate from. Three gun, four gun, long range, long like range, you hunting, <laughs> you do everything. I know. If there's a gun, I want to do it. And that was kind of my goal from the beginning was that uh, a lot of people, they get into it and they specialize in a certain type of sport or a certain avenue in shooting. But I just wanted to get out there and, and get in as many places as I could and shoot as many guns as I could and, and go as many places as I could. So. And you have done that. And I... I am just so impressed with all of the things you do because, like, you, Maggie, you do not want to get in a, any sort of competition with, okay? Because she she will do anything to win. <laughs> anything. <laughs> I watched her one night with Doug Koenig, and they were in a um, wasabi off. <laughs> and they both had put in, like, mouthfuls of wasabi. This is so off topic. Mouthfuls of wasabi. I've forgotten in. about this. Like, and... Uh. Maggie would roll it on her tongue and she would stare at Doug and she's like bring it Doug and they're like okay add more wasabi because it's not hot enough so she'd put more wasabi on her tongue and stare at Doug finally Doug's like this is just freaking stupid you know it's so funny and he quit he was like I'm not doing this anymore and you're like game on (laughs) growing up I never thought I was competitive like I just I didn't realize that about myself and now I look back and I'm like oh yeah yeah Yeah, I'm a little bit competitive I am not competing against Maggie she will Tanya Harding my knees to win I'm pretty sure I I wish I could deny that and and say that I no I have limits but no no. I know we have we have some limitations (laughs) but no you you are very competitive and I love that about you because you take everything you do and you put everything into it like your mind body soul like if you're gonna do something you are all in well I think you kind of have to I mean especially for us especially for women like us yeah. where we have to be our own motivators yeah. I mean there's nobody else that I wake up to and answer to every single day but myself so I'm into that I have to have my own motivation my own self-drive my own determination and I have to make everything count so yeah. I mean and I, I guess that's how it kind of it all comes together and makes it a perfect fit to be in this industry and to do the shooting sports and be competitive. Yeah. You know, but That's one thing being self-employed or self-starting, <laughs> yeah. whatever quote-unquote air know. quotes we're going to give this, is there's no one that holds you to a level no. of accountability. Like if you're going to train for a day, yeah. you don't have someone, a boss that you're like punching no. a time clock for, right? Like you have to be a self-starter and be like, okay, I'm going to the range today. This is my training plan. This is my round count. These are the firearms I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. Walk everybody through, like, what that looks like. Well, it is 100% what you said because there is nobody to hold me accountable except for myself when I go to a competition and I feel like I didn't perform to my level. Um, I shoot against some amazing, amazing women, men as well. Um, I know they're out there training. I know they're practicing hard. Sometimes I can't beat them because they're that good because the level of competition is that good. But if I can go out there and know that I did my best and Mm -hmm. I performed to my ability, Mm -hmm. then at least I have 
yeah. that to comfort me, yeah. you know, with a loss. But it all comes down to me deciding to go to the range and me deciding how long I'm going to be at the range mm-hmm. and what my goals and objectives are. And I can certainly take a day off and say, I don't feel like going yeah. to the range today. Not into it. But then that's on me when I go to the next match. And I feel like, you know what, if I just had a little bit more training, I could have had a little bit more confidence in this scenario. So it really does come down to just being your own boss and and putting yourself out there. So Yeah. And so give us like a average training day for you because obviously you shoot so many disciplines but Mm -hmm. what's kind of your main focus when you go in is a lot of it like mindset so when you press a trigger are you imagining front sight front sight front sight and and do you find that like hey if I have full focus on this I'm shooting better versus if I'm thinking about an email I have to return yeah so a lot of a lot of my training it starts at home so it's all prepping the gear making sure that everything is set up right um, making sure all the products are in our alignment I do a lot of dry firing which is really, really boring and people hate it, but I spend a lot of time at home just going through the mechanics of how the firearms operate and thinking about that trigger press, that sight picture, um, how I'm drawing from the holster, how I'm getting on target. Um, What I try to do is whatever micro drill I'm working on, if it's like the trigger press, I set myself a timer for five minutes so that I can focus for five solid minutes and not think about the email and not think about the dog that needs dinner or anything else that's happening. And when that five minutes goes off, mom, you can't (laughs) hardly turn that off. I know know. she's at my feet, Um, but I have to break it down. And then I put a bunch of five minutes together. Mm -hmm. Then I move on to a draw. Then I move on to a reload. Then I move on to getting into position. Mm -hmm. So I try to spend, if I'm gearing up towards a competition and hour to two hours at home every single day just dry firing before I ever get to the range because I can learn a lot about the mechanics without the distraction of the firearm actually going off yeah um, so you're using snap caps then and running drills uh-huh yep and I've got a timer and I've got just target set up and you know I've obviously set up a, a area in my home I, I live a you know, by myself, but even if I have company or if I have friends staying with me, I, you know, there's no ammo. It's a my own secure area within the house where nobody's going to walk in, and I'm able to just practice with yeah. my firearms, and that really helps if the weather's poor, mm-hmm. if other things are going on. Um, but then, obviously, the goal is to then get out to the range yeah. and take everything that I practiced... In a dry fire setting. In a dry fire setting and say, okay, now can I do that under pressure with live fire, yeah. you know, and then really see like, okay, I'm calling good shots at home when I'm dry firing yeah. and I'm saying that they're all A's. I'm saying that they're all center hits at yeah. home, but now I got to go to the range and make that happen and make that happen and make sure that they really are with the recoil and with everything else that you're incorporating in with, with live fire and say, okay, are they still mm-hmm. center hits? Yeah. Are they still good times? Um, and then a lot of times, you know, I set up either mini drills or I'll set up like full stages. I shoot a lot of USPSA, a lot of three yeah. gun. So I'll set up 20 targets Mm -hmm. and run through them and time myself and really practice taking everything that I learned and putting it back together so that it is movement, it is actually shooting, it's transitioning from from different firearms. Like in a a three-gun, you'll go from pistol, shotgun, rifle. So they can be big projects to set up at the range. Yeah, huge projects. And a lot lot of work putting those stages together. I know. Um, So... When you're shooting your pistols, you were running the Ruger American Mm -hmm. last year, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about that. You know, are you running an optic or are you running open sights? What are you doing? I did. So I was shooting the Ruger American, which um, specifically for USPSA, which I shoot a lot of, you can shoot it either in production division, which is just iron sights, or carry optics where you can put an optic on it. And I chose to have an optic on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything that I was doing last year was gearing up for USPSAs, so the United States Practical Shooting Associations international they're a member of the international uh, governing association a world shoot yeah and that was in thailand um so that happens every three years is handgun and then the other years are rifle and shotgun and we try to sneak pcc in there every yeah. once in a while but pcc for those of us mm-hmm. pistol caliber carbine yes and ruger makes a really great pistol caliber carbine yes and i love normally in a in an off year for for a handgun world shoot I would shoot a lot of three gun. I would shoot mm-hmm. a lot of PCC, but specifically just getting ready to go to Thailand last year, all I did was handgun. Okay. Um, so I really kind of honed in on that. Honed in on that because I wanted everything to be about repetition mm-hmm. and comfort with that platform, mm-hmm. and not do anything else that was going to distract me from the goal. So I was really happy. I was part of the ladies' team for production optics. 
it's, I think my fifth or sixth time. And they crushed it. <laughs> we did. We had such a good time. Yeah. And it, it's so cool just to be able to travel around the world. With and other incredible women. Uh-huh, and meet yeah. people. Because I have friends in all these countries yeah. and all these different places. And, you know, and outside of, of traveling for work, for traveling for competition, I don't know that I would get to go to Thailand. Yeah. Or I would get to go to some of these other places mm-hmm. that I've gone to. But... Um, but everything was specifically around just the Ruger American and that platform last year yeah. for competition. Yeah, that and, and are you running like an extended magazine or what's your gear look like? So it depends on the competition. So in USPSA, you can have extended magazines, but in IPSC, you're limited to 15 rounds, which okay. that was the capacity of okay. the magazine. Ruger American comes with a capacity of 17. Because so. I had shot it like a... I've shot one three gun match <laughs> once, uh, and some of those ladies had like these magazines were like thirty rounds, and like the, you know you step into a stage and I'm like I got ten. <laughs> well, that's what's funny. So that's what's really cool about the PCC yeah. that you mentioned is so our PCCs they come with two different mag wells. One of them has an insert for our Ruger magazines, and then it also comes with an insert for our Glock magazines. Mm-hmm. And you can get a lot of extended base pads for yeah. Glock magazines, so you can have a magazine that's holding fifty rounds. Yeah. So it's really fun for planking. It, like if you really want to run through a stage and do mm-hmm. a lot of shooting and after you've done all your dry fire practice and you're yes. ready for that, you can really, you know, yeah. get a lot of planking done. And it's so advantageous too, just for competition because reload yeah. takes time. Yeah. You're oh, not, yeah. yeah. Time is, time is everything. You're not shooting. So, I mean, yeah. there's some really cool things that you can get into with the extended, you know, base pads. Um, you know, I've got all the belts and the holsters and everything yeah. like that. And, and so you can really get some tricked out stuff. Yeah, and you have like a legitimate setup. Like when I put my belt on the first time, I was like, I felt almost like, like a superwoman. I was like, oh man, I can uh-huh. put my hands on these things, and like my elbows are rested. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, man, I feel cool. I know, <laughs> like I, know. I loved it. It was awesome. You know, well, we start getting super into it, and anything we can do to to shave, Faster. you know, a, a split second off here or there. I'm like, ooh, if I just have this different mag pouch, and it's canted this way, and I move it here, I can save three tenths of a second, and that's gonna make all the difference. And in that's the world. what's driving the innovation in it all is. of these, this uh-huh. gear and all of everything. And yeah sports well and that's what's fun too because then you know i'm sure you do the same thing on the hunting side i get to come back to ruger and say this is cool yeah and this is where things are going and this would be fun and wouldn't it be nice if we did this and then we get to drive some of those conversations some of that innovation yeah Mm -hmm. and say okay this is where the market's going Mm -hmm. and this is where the technology needs to Mm -hmm. be to support it that's what i love about ruger is um they're a brand and a company as a whole that really listens to not only you know customer feedback but our engineering staff and our ambassador staff and our shooting team you know for the most part the company is centered around people that are the end user as well yes and so we can take our own feedback of like well i'd love to see this or try that and yeah. and take that to our engineering and and mm-hmm. they really try to make those changes and you know we have multiple generations of firearms which we've seen you know with the Ruger Precision Rimfire mm-hmm. or excuse me Ruger Precision Rifle to now we have the Doug Koenig custom comp rifles and so they took you know the Ruger Precision Rifle which was a great idea but then you know we modified it made yeah. it better and and that's the progression of things you know and, and I love that about Ruger's they're such a nimble company it is cool and I think it makes a, a huge difference too because I mean in competition the competition goes on no matter what so yeah. if it's raining if it's snowing if it's hot if it's dusty. dry <laughs> humid dusty it, it doesn't matter so we have to have products that perform in yeah. any kind of competition and I'm sure with you with hunting I mean when you have something scheduled and you're going out you you're have no going ju- yeah. yeah you're going no matter what the weather is yeah um, and sometimes I wish <laughs> we would call it you know for the weather but we don't no um, <laughs> I've done some matches mm-hmm. I called the first year I did PRS the precision rain series yeah because I felt like it's just a pig wallowing around on the ground it was wet my gun was wet everything was wet you know you have people that are you know hand loading that are roasting primer pockets and yes i'm like i'm shooting factory so i'm good (laughs) (laughs) only i love that you know hornady's ammo is like so great like i can just shoot this and run it in my guns and it's consistent i love Mm -hmm. that about it yeah yeah you know that's such a good time. Rain or shine. Yeah, that is such a good time because you do have to have all the supporting products as well that you really believe in and say, okay, yeah, this is this is ammo that I trust. This is gear that I trust. Because I was just going to make one point is the only time they'll stop a competition is when there's lightning. Oh, uh-huh. really? Just, yeah, no, because okay. nobody wants to be the lightning, lightning rod. rod. 
<laughs> you know, so so that's the only time is like when it starts raining, we are like, oh, uh, lightning, lightning. Yeah, that's yeah. the only yeah, time. Yeah, nobody that we wants stop. struck. <laughs> nobody wants that to happen. You know? I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever shot. Imagine the lightning. Now that you mention it, but I don't shoot a ton of matches. Uh, and mm-hmm. when I do, it's all rifle. It's not the pistol. I mean, the, like I look up to you so much, mm-hmm. what you're doing, and I've pulled you aside offline. Like, hey, what should I be getting? What should I look yeah, at? And yeah. there's so much new gear. I'm so far from ever being like a competitive pistol shooter like so far from it that um i i mean i just look at what you do with a pistol it's so much harder to accurately shoot a pistol than a rifle but what i always tell people and i was just having this conversation with jen who's another one of our brand ambassadors Mm -hmm. and i know you've had her on on the show but we were just talking and you know competition doesn't have to just be about competition yeah you know it doesn't have to be about going out there and and beating somebody or, or winning your division or anything like that it's great just for practice for repetition, for muscle memory. For fun. For fun. And also just learning how to perform under pressure mm-hmm. because it's nerve wracking. Like I'm, I've been doing this since 2007. I am still petrified like yeah. when I go out there, but I've had to learn over the years, like how to manage that yeah. and how to fight through it. And if ever you want to get more proficient at hunting or make sure that you feel more comfortable, if you ever found yourself in a, in a self-defense or personal protection kind of situation, you want to be able to know how you yeah. manage your stress, mm-hmm. you know, and how that affects your accuracy. Mm-hmm. And so you can kind of learn your limits in a different way mm-hmm. through competition. It's interesting, like hunting, I've seen people where um, they'll get lined out to maybe shoot a deer or something and you're like okay it's 250 yards and they are so focused they almost black out and then afterwards they're like man i don't i don't even know how far the deer was and you're like well i told you three times yeah yeah (laughs) it's 250 Uh yards and you get into like this tunnel and i and it's um that's really interesting what happens to the brain yes yes and i think practice helps you kind of overcome that so you don't become that like kind of go to that almost incoherent space of it's almost like a fight or flight mechanism kicks Uh in when you get really excited Mm -hmm. and um, you have to train through that to be able to control that response almost right I I know a lot of times like in competition I mean I've got a squad behind me I've got other competitors I've got a range officer a safety officer there's family members watching so sometimes it can be noisy and distracting and so you have to find that perfect balance of tuning the world out so that you're not listening to somebody else's conversation when you're pressed for time. Yeah. But at the same time, also making sure that you're still aware of your surroundings yeah. and, and you can pick up on important information mm-hmm. if that's being relayed behind mm-hmm. you. Um, you know, if, if you have a range officer or safety officer who's giving you some sort of direction, yeah. you need to be able to to, 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 to ingest that, that too. Mm-hmm. And then they put the timer right behind your ear. Uh, I hate that. They do that on purpose just yeah, to jack with you. Of course. Like, ah, oh, gosh, know. timer. I know. Uh, Yogi, when I shoot my NRL hunter matches, those are interesting because, you know, you have a four-minute stage, so your, your job is to basically find the target, range estimate it, figure out your shooting position, uh-huh. get your data, and engage. And, um... Man, we have a timer I run at two minutes and it goes off. And mm-hmm. if I haven't done my job on the front end, I have to start. I better hurry it up because I'm now cutting into my shooting yeah. time. And so I run that timer just as like, hey, kind of a, a wake up call because you can get really lost in um, the task that you're doing and yeah. not realize how much time's gone by. And you see that with new hunters too. They they go to set up on a deer or something and. Man, they're like three minutes in, and you're like, "Holy yeah. smokes, this thing's not going to stand out here forever," you know? Well, you want it because to be they're perfect. just not trained, right? Like mm-hmm. they need to practice building those positions, get that muscle memory, yeah. and, and get in and out of those positions, and figure out what works for them quickly. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really think is beneficial about USPSA because it, it is a mix of time versus accuracy, mm-hmm. and so you really do have to find that balance of like, I want these to be good shots, I want them to be center hits, I want them to be within the A yeah. zone. But it can't take me so long that I just lose everything on the back end yeah. with time, yeah. you know. So you have to find that acceptable level of accuracy. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not the A zone. Maybe it's the, the alpha and the Charlie zone. Yeah. And you're going to accept like a little bit less accuracy just to get through. And get the speed. Of, yeah. Hey. 
you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are gonna wanna take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're gonna have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also gonna get added benefits like draw odds with Top Rut that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through Hunting Fool Magazine. And to boot you guys, they've got tons of great specials through partners like Silencer Central where if you're an OnX Elite member, you really benefit from those partnerships. So if you guys aren't a member, I encourage you go online to the OnX Hunt website, use code WILD20 at checkout and you're gonna save 20%. You're gonna love being an OnX Hunt Elite member. That's my problem. When we, we just got back from Gunsight and I am so used to shooting precision rifle, I want every bullet to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. And so I'll draw yeah. and I'll press, press, press on the trigger and I'm like so yeah. slow and I break it and my bullet holes are like cutting each other and I build this perfect mm -hmm. little nest and it's they're all touching and I'm like, yay, I've done so good. I pat my back and, and Iling's like, well, this this shot here is worth the same as if you shot it over here. <laughs> Hurry it up. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But I have had a really hard time kind of overcoming that um, of it's okay to have an acceptable hit, you know, on your target. It's not deducting points and I'm getting, I'm gaining speed. And yeah. so that's one of the things that I've found that I really mentally need to overcome, right? Like yeah. is not, I need to try to be faster. And if I want to ever, you know, step into a comp competition setting, like I would have to be faster. I'm way too slow. I'm like a grandma out there. Well, I think it's also about having variety because <coughs> I've definitely <coughs> shot some speed competitions that were very heavily focused on, on speed yeah. and then more bullseye where I could take my time. Yeah. And sometimes I kind of joke that I'm always going in with the, the wrong approach. I'm too fast on the bullseye and too, too accurate on the speed shoots. But you have to have that, that ability to to differentiate between yeah. the two and, and pull it out when you need to. And if you need to take a really accurate, precise shot, be able to perform that. Yeah. And then if you just need to hurry up and go, hurry up and go. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Hurry up and go. Just get it done. <laughs> no, just shoot, shoot, Stop shoot. Stop messing around. <laughs> so what is like an average training day for you? So I get up in the morning. I like to um, work out in the morning. I usually I have, walk your dog. I do. I, she's all on my Instagram. So if, if you're not following, you have to go see my Instagram. It's yes. Maggie Reese shooting, and and her name is Penny, and Aww. she's a golden retriever mix. So we have to work out together in the morning and, and get some cardio in and go for a walk, mm -hmm. and and then I come back and try and do some free weights and and whatnot. Um, it kind of depends on if I have to, I load all of my own ammo. I prep all of my own gear. I clean That's all impressive. of, you know. You do all your own ammo. Yeah. So that is very time consuming in and of itself. Yes. Um, any maintenance on the firearms, I do most of that myself. Um, so there's a lot of prep work. Um, I try to get my dry fire in, the one to two hours of dry fire. Weather permitting, then I go out to the range. There's a certain amount of time that's invested in, in just setting up the range, getting my targets out there. Yeah. Um, I am fortunate that I do have access to some places where I can leave you know, some targets out, but they're all steel targets. So yeah. I have to set up my paper. paper targets. I have to rearrange everything, you know, just in terms of making it the best for whatever competition I'm getting ready for. Yeah. Um, then my actual live fire time is, yeah. you know, shortened somewhat because of that you know if I can if I can shoot you know 200 rounds if I can shoot 500 rounds you know um I back in the day I used to go out there and shoot a thousand rounds and you know and then we had a little bit of an ammo crisis and a primer crisis and I couldn't yeah. go through all you're that. like okay I'm not doing this anymore <laughs> all right I'm like I'm gonna figure out how to make Rain those this <laughs> bullets count yeah. a little bit more and uh and then you know I might spend the next half hour or hour after that picking up my brass because mm -hmm. I'm gonna reload it mm -hmm. tearing down my targets cleaning up the range you know making sure it's ready for the next person mm -hmm. so it's a so what I'm hearing is you're doing a lot of stuff individually yes so it's a very almost um a solo sport it is you know um it, it is yeah um and sometimes you know i i just i have people i can practice with and train with and i do like on fridays i try to go out with a group and yeah. you know and it's nice to always have see, some fellowship yeah some fellowship and and also just to, to gauge you know my performance against other people's mm -hmm. um because 
I know, you know, for me personally, there's a difference in how I perform in practice when there are no nerves. Yeah. And then there's a difference in how I perform in competition when I'm a little bit of nervous. Under pressure. Uh, and I need to have other people that I can gauge that off of. Mm -hmm. um, so it does help to have training partners. Yeah. Um, you know, and. So do you, you're training with people at least once a week then? I try to. Yeah. I try to. As, which is good. You probably have a thriving community in your area. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that are like, man, I would love to shoot. But I don't have a shooting community. And most towns, some mm -hmm. towns, depending on where you live, have a gun club. Yes. You like know, people can join a gun club and be like, hey, I want to join this gun club. Or, or um, you can get online to practice score and it'll list out all these regional events. And if you've mm -hmm. never shot a match or if you've never been to one and you want to see what everybody's doing, go watch it. Yeah. Like just go hang out, talk to people, ask their opinion because everybody's going to give it to you whether you want it or not. <laughs> you know what? But it's, it was so helpful. Like, yeah. I just, when I first started, I just started going out to matches. Yeah. And, and people will just come up and, and help you and give you advice and loan you gear and, yeah. and push you on your way. Like, and that's the number one thing I tell people is, is like, don't go out there and buy a bunch of gear. Like, you yeah. know, pick your firearm that you like, you know, that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. because that's so personal to an individual mm -hmm. is to pick something that you really like. And then, you know, just spend some time maybe trying out different gear and, and making sure that it works for you yeah. um, and not putting a bunch of money up front because then you'll just end up going out and buying everything all over again. Yeah, you buy twice. <laughs> buy once, cry once. And yeah. sometimes the stuff that you're going to find that you want to buy is expensive and it's worth saving for. Yeah. Because um, it's going to make your journey maybe a little bit easier too. And, yes. And also I think a lot of it is development of fundamentals. And you, you know, if you're using equipment that will help you incorrectly learn a fundamental, it's twice as hard to unlearn yes. or redevelop a new habit that might be a better or more effective way. Yeah. So talking to people, figuring out the gear they're running and developing that muscle memory up front is yeah. probably a faster route to being successful. 100%. Like I talk to a lot of husbands who always come up to me and say like, you know, tell me what gun to buy for my mm -hmm. wife. And I'm like, no, yeah. never. Like she has to pick what works for her yeah. with her hand size, her grip strength everything like that because you know in the beginning when I first started shooting um, you know I was using either my my dad's gear or yeah. uh, my boyfriend then my husband's gear at the time um, and I it made such a difference for me when I was able to get my own gear that was set specifically yeah. for my needs and there's some fun routes you can go like with the Ruger American pistol it has the yeah. adjustable back strap so you can mm -hmm. make it fit to your hand size mm -hmm. but if something doesn't have that adjustability in it then it just might not work for it you it might not be at the best fit for mm -hmm. you like my hands are super small so some of the firearms that have a manual safety yeah i have a difficult time engaging or disengaging like i i've been shooting uh the doug Koenig custom comp 1911 a lot and what i love about it is i can be on that safety putting it on engaging or disengaging um it's so easy yeah it's yeah. easy for me to operate that safety other pistols that i've shot the safety is not as easy to operate right, right? especially when we're talking about some of the um some of the small polymer pistols mm -hmm. and the safeties are stiff and they're, they're supposed to be that way for a reason by design. They're right. supposed to help you be safer with a firearm, which, you know, Ruger is all about being as safe as we can with firearms and, and being responsible mm -hmm. firearms owners as well. So, um, it, you know, every firearm is different in that. And some people have bigger hands or smaller yeah. hands and like the extended magazines that have a larger surface area for gripping and, uh. um, you know, just depends on the person. Well, and for me, I really try to, you know, for competition, I want my guns for competition to be really competition specific, yeah. but I have an objective when yeah. I go. But you can also still just come out and shoot competition, you know, with whatever other firearm that you have. Yeah. And then it doesn't need to be as, as specific, but, yeah. but they all have different uses and they all mm -hmm. have different avenues. So you want something, you know, long term that this is perfect for concealed carry. This is perfect for, you know, on the body. This mm -hmm. is perfect for the purse. And this is perfect for competition. Yeah. Which is why Ruger makes so many firearms. Mm -hmm. Because there's not really like a one firearm that's no. perfect for everything. You no. know, it's, it's, you know, depending on what your goals are. If you're plinking, mm -hmm. if you're concealing, if you're competing. Yeah. You know, they're all different. If you're hunting, you know, yeah. it's, it all varies. That was so fun. That was what was so fun. And one of the big draws for me it was to come to shoot for Ruger is I looked around and I'm like there's a lot I can a do lot. like yeah. a lot I can do there's a, it has every avenue um, that I can go down right here in this booth, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, looking mm -hmm. around and it's cool. It's cool to look out mm -hmm. there and you and I were talking about this before the podcast started like there's such good energy yeah. and like there's so many people and well this and booth right now I wish people could see it mm -hmm. is 
shoulder to shoulder I know. in front of us. It is unbelievable <laughs> how many people are in here. And it's been like that mm -hmm. all weekend since NRA started. But we have so many cool products and we have such a diversity of products yeah. that, you and know. And so much innovation that happens every yeah. year. Yeah. You know, There's our, something for everybody. <laughs> our Ruger made Marlin <laughs> rifles are like a super huge win right now. Yeah. Like those are just like crazy popular right now, which they're amazing firearms. And um, so let's talk a little bit about, we know you shoot competitive. You're amazing mm -hmm. at that. Um, let's talk a little bit about your long range shooting. Your mm -hmm. husband was, a, your your late husband was mm -hmm. a really great precision rifle shooter as well as being a world-class pistol shooter. He was, I, it was super <laughs> advantageous for me <laughs> because he, he was so good at everything that he did. My husband, uh, his name is Michael Voigt and he passed away five years ago, but he was just uh, a, an icon within the industry, so mm -hmm. talented and he could shoot anything that he picked up. And long range was really something that yeah. he was super passionate about. He did a lot of training. He did a lot of firearms instructor um, instruction for our first responders and, and our military and our law enforcement. So he was exceptional at that. Is that where you were introduced to that discipline of shooting as well? Um, I would say definitely I got more into long range once I met him. Mm -hmm. I was primarily a handgun shooter um, yeah. before I met him. So I did a lot of pistol shooting. Mm -hmm. And that's how we uh, met Was yeah. for the first time was on the range. Um, but he really opened me up to, to kind of exploring other things and yeah. realizing the value of like, there's a lot of cool stuff. Don't it's don't fun. don't just get trapped right here. Yeah. Don't get sucked into yeah. that. But um, but that's something that you know, it, it's been really cool. I was able to shoot on the rifle team yeah. for IPSC for our ladies wow. um, rifle team. I so. didn't know you did that. Yeah. See, you something <laughs> so, new about people all the time. I know. So that was fun. I'll tell you, wild something wild about that was that was the the first ever rifle shoot was in Russia. Wow. Um, and so that was in 2017. And I look back on that and I was like, okay, I can check the box. I, I went to that country and I probably will not go back. Yes. <laughs> you know? Definitely will not be going back now. Uh, <laughs> but that's what's kind of wild is you go yeah. these places that you wouldn't normally go to. Yeah. Um, and I have so many, you know, just friends from, from that region. I, I mean, it's, it's cool, but, yeah. but I probably won't go back. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us about that, that that competition series. What's the objectives? How does that function? Mm -hmm. So uh, the rifle for IPSC, it's very similar to handguns. So it's speed and accuracy. You have paper targets, um, steel targets. You have a course of fire that you're running through. Um, you have props that you might have to manipulate. Wow. Open a door, open a drawer crawl through a barrel, crawl on top of something. So it's very physical as well. It can be physical. Um, and here in the U.S. particularly, we do tend to have some like regional <coughs> differences um, where some are more physical than others. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, I shoot three gun competitions, the pistol, mm -hmm. rifle, and shotgun here. You're running from bay to bay to bay. So you yeah. might shoot and then have a 25-yard dash or a 50-yard dash, you know, to the next bay. And so... I. <laughs> why I'm out there every morning with Penny of, <laughs> I know, going like, I got to run to the end of the block. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, you need to be good at your sprints. I might not be a marathon runner, but I got to be able to make yeah. it to the end of the block yeah. because, you know, going bay and to bay. And get on target and have and a clear sight picture and control, be able to control your breathing, breathing and yes. all of this other stuff. Yeah. And then you're kind of frantic at that point yeah. and, you know, all this a lot other that goes stuff, into it. you know, but, yeah. but it is really cool. It is and really you cool. also hunt. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody about that because that's what I love about you. Like you literally <laughs> do everything. So I did a lot of hunting with my husband. It was something that we we like to do. I I used to joke with him. I was like, we never go anywhere without a gun because <laughs> <laughs> our vacation is just hunting. That's like, literally the story of my life. I actually, was like, <laughs> can we go someplace without a gun? But. You know, yeah. he was like, why would we do that? Why would we want <laughs> to do that? Yeah. So I did a lot of hunting uh, with him, and that was that was great. And then when he passed away, it was a little bit of, like, an emotional block for me. Yeah. Like, I just, you know, I, I associated it so much with him. And I think hunting requires, like, a lot of trust mm -hmm. with the individuals that you're with. And you have to really feel safe and comfortable with them. Yeah. And then not having him, you know, that just kind of was a little bit something mm -hmm. that I wasn't interested in doing for a while. 
But within the last year or two, I've realized, okay, this is... I'm ready to go back. Yeah, yeah. I love doing this. He would yeah. want me to do it. Yeah. You know, I have a support group. I have people that I trust that I mm -hmm. can go out there and do it. I would love to go with you. Oh, my because gosh. I would love to hunt with you. You know, because I, I, I really do. I, yeah. It's so important to have people that you're like, yeah. okay, you won't push me, yeah. you know, into a situation that I'm not comfortable no. in. You know, yeah. you won't pressure me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you have to be willing to walk away and say, mm -hmm. okay, that wasn't the right opportunity. Yes. That wasn't the right shot. So I'm just going to wait. You know, if I lose the animal, you know, if you I... You haven't if I, lost anything. Yeah, you haven't lost anything. And that's so yeah. important. Yeah. And that's why I always, I'm like so particular on who I'll go with. Mm -hmm. And and I... Well, because, I mean, you think about it. Every round that we send downrange, whether it's at a target or an animal, we're responsible for that yes. round. Yes. <clears throat> and when you have a round and its intention is harvesting an animal mm -hmm. there it bears tremendous responsibility yeah. and so i always tell people man if you are not comfortable don't do it because yeah. you're the one after you press that round off and send it yeah. you can't take it back no and so you have to be like man i did everything right i felt comfortable this was this was the right situation and and you have to you have to be able to live with that. And some sometimes if people get pushed into taking a mm -hmm. shot and they are not happy with the outcome of the shot placement or whatever, that they have they have to live with that, right? right? Like you, if you injure an animal or something and nobody wants to do that as a hunter. So we all want to be number one, that's where training really comes in. That's mm -hmm. why I started training with firearms so much is because I wanted to be ethical and humane and rapidly dispatch an animal. Um and harvest it in a manner that gave its life reference. Yeah. I, I never wanted to hurt them, right? right. Like I just, so um, that's where I was trained so much. You know, I want to be able to you know, hunt um, and then honor that animal. Mm -hmm. And then while I'm providing for my family as well. And so um, being trained helps me do that more yeah. effectively. And so I, I'm always a, like the person of like, hey, don't do it if you're not feeling right. good about it. Like, mm -hmm. we will wait for another opportunity, different opportunity, better opportunity, or another day. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, there's <laughs> no sense in rushing this. Yeah. You know? My first hunt that I did after my husband passed away, I went out with a friend of mine, and he knew where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. And I was like, don't you dare yell at me. Don't you dare yeah. pressure me. And he was like, I will sit here with you all day long. Yeah. And and we did sit there for a yeah. while, and we watched some animals come and go. And then finally a, a, a deer walked, walked by, and it was like the perfect shot. And nice. I was like... Okay, I feel ready, and and he was like, I'm not saying a word, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then after, you know, after everything went very smoothly, I was very happy with it, you know. Yeah. Um, he was a great support, and then I had the the satisfaction of going like, okay, now I, I still have a, yeah. a freezer stock full of deer meat, mm -hmm. you know that that I harvested, that yeah. I did on my own. So and that's amazing to share that memory with other people in your yes. community and your yes. family, and mm. and yeah. and enjoy that every time you. I know. Every time I cook dinner, I'm like, right. hmm. like, yeah, this is really good. My <laughs> husband and I, we, we only eat pretty much wild game meat when we're mm -hmm. home. I mean, we eat a lot of obviously non-game meat when we're traveling, but when we're home, that's pretty much all yeah. we eat. And man, I, I take a lot of pride in that. And then, you know, we really love to, you know, bring that to dinner parties or bring that to events. Mm -hmm. or, the other day we went to a friend's house and they had bison tacos. Yeah. It was amazing. I'm like, oh my gosh, this was so good. I never had bison before. I so I love that part of the hunting journey and collectively it, 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 it is bring a whole nother level of satisfaction to the experience. Yeah. And, and getting to share it with people. Cause like you said, like I made deer tacos, I made red deer tacos for all of my neighbors. And that wasn't something that they, no. they had never eaten venison no. before. I'm <laughs> sure they were like, what is this that we're eating? We go to Maggie's house and it's mystery meat. <laughs> yes, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I don't know, whatever I pull out of the freezer. You <laughs> That's know? so funny. But it's fun because then you people realize like, oh, this is good. And, yeah. you know, and there's a different nutritional component to it. And mm -hmm. you get different vitamins and minerals and all sorts of cool different yeah, flavors. Well, no, and lack of hormones mm -hmm. and all of these yeah. things that, you know, that so many people are becoming more health conscious um, and and concerned about what we put into our bodies. So, yeah. yeah, it's great being a hunter. I'm proud of being a hunter for, for so many reasons. Um Tell everybody a little bit about Maggie's mission. So that was something really fun that Ruger and I developed. And I really wanted to have um, an avenue to get people out there and experience yeah. competition and know that it doesn't have to be all about, you know, going out there and being number one and beating everybody. Yeah. And, you know, because a lot of people then end up feeling like, oh, my gosh, I have to train so much before yeah. I can even they go feel, to They feel more overwhelmed than they want to start. No. And it's really not that kind of environment, but it is about people just feeling comfortable yeah. behind the firearm. And like you said, uh, you know, you do it from the hunting side and I've appreciated that and I try to do it from the competition side of like nobody's going to pressure you yeah 
Nobody's going to force you to do anything that you don't feel safe or comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go at, at anybody else's speed. You don't have to go at anybody else's level. There's always a different avenue of, you know, you can take a little bit different approach that gives you more time or more opportunity to take the shot. Yeah. And then you just do it at your comfort level because mm -hmm. competition is all about competing against yourself. 100%. Just like you know? any, well, not any sport, but it is an individual sport yes. because even in like long range matches, every time someone walks up to a stage, even though we're all shooting the same stage, the wind does something different at every, yes. every yeah. second. And, it, and it's unique and, and so individual to you. Every person shoots literally a different mm -hmm. match because of that variable. And so, you know, the, really the person you are competing with at the end of the day is yourself. Yeah. So we were able to get just a, a good group of people and we always look for, you know, first time, you know, new shooters. And sometimes people come and they maybe had, a, you know, a, a negative uh, perception of firearms mm -hmm. or a negative connotation. Um, um, but once I'm able to sit down and really explain like the safety aspects yeah. and like the education component is so Huge. key. I always tell people, even if you don't want to go and buy your own firearm, you're never going to compete. You're never going to hunt. It just isn't something that you that have interest in doing. Yeah. Still, just from the safety component of understanding how a mm -hmm. firearm works, yeah. understanding how to unload that firearm, yeah. how to check and make sure that it's clear that there's not still around in the chamber. Mm -hmm. Like that's just knowledge that could very valuable save you down the road mm -hmm. in some other circumstance or something that you can pass on to somebody else that you can teach mm -hmm. to somebody else. You know, always understanding just how the firearm operates and how to unload it. Like if you yeah. stop right there, then I'm good. Yeah, exactly. You know, cool. Like, yeah. you know, you do you well, with whatever your goals there's are. There's like range etiquette too. Like mm -hmm. it's horrifying to me when I see someone show up at the range and their magazines are inserted in their rifles, yeah. their bolts are closed, and you're like, ah, yeah. you have no idea. You yeah. cannot judge the condition of the firearm. You know, learning, hey, yeah. mag out, bolt back. Mm -hmm. Put a chamber flag in there. You know, right. all of these extra little things that we can do as firearms owners to ensure mm -hmm. that we don't have a negligent discharge or something. Or that other people can have the confidence in knowing, hey, I can look at that firearm and tell what condition it is visually without ever touching it. Right. If you have a spouse that's in the military or in the police force, yeah. uh, you know, and they have <coughs> firearms in the home and, and maybe for whatever reason they're not present, but, you know, you need to unload their firearm or yeah. you need to make sure that their firearm is, is unloaded, then you you need to have that capacity. Even yeah. if you don't want to shoot yourself, yeah. you need to have that knowledge yeah. of, okay, I can safely handle this firearm. I know how to pick it up. Yeah. I know what direction to point it in. I can check and make sure it's empty. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm all about education. Yeah, that's great. So where can people watch your series? Where is it viewable? Gosh, so Ruger.com, um, anything on Ruger. Ruger.com. You can follow me on social media. Mm -hmm. So Maggie Reese Shooting. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I always link to all of that so you can get a direct link. Yeah. It's also on YouTube. So yeah. it's it's actually in quite a different few formats. Yeah, but if great. you if you follow me on social media, then I'll always point you in the right direction. Yeah. So and everybody should be. <laughs> Hold on. What? Sorry, I couldn't what? hear. What? Oh no. Uh -uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so, okay, yeah, so it is available to watch. Sorry, Joe, you don't have to edit that part right there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to watch your content on the Ruger website and then follow along with your adventures on your on your uh, Instagram, Facebook, and it's on YouTube as well, which yes. I think is such a great resource. There's, and Ruger has a ton of video resources as yeah. well out there that are in addition to, to Maggie's Mission, which is you the title of your series. Yeah, you know one of the funnest things for me um, that Ruger does on their YouTube channel is they always they explain how to break down and tear down every firearm. Yeah. Um, sometimes, like, even I am like, oh, I don't know. But they have little yeah. tech tips, the pro tips. The 1911. Uh-huh. That I've one can be a little bit of a bugger. <laughs> I follow along, there are tricks, though. like, all yeah. the time. When I have, like, a new firearm, I pull up, like, their uh, disassembly video yeah. and then their reassembly video. Yeah. I pull up their tech tips on how to clean it and yeah. everything. And so it's, for me, because I like it visually, mm -hmm. you know, in front of me. And it's That's just great a advice. great resource mm -hmm. to go through. So anything, on, like, on the U Ruger YouTube channel is... Yeah. Super, super important. I love going through all of that content. And then I get to see, you know, all of us Everything, and, yeah. you know, and, and the team <laughs> and all of that. So um, that's super cool. But. 
gosh, yeah, I don't no, know. It's good. It's it's good. You're doing so much. You're such an advocate for the, for shooting sports and for women. And I really, like I said, I look up to you. And I cannot wait. I hope I'm trying to get Maggie to move to Wyoming. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Shameless as that mm-hmm. is, I'm like, just come to Wyoming. I want to yeah. start shooting with you. I want to hang out more. I want to take you hunting. If you live there, you'll be a resident. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. we'd have so much fun. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna do some crossover stuff. Yeah, I really would like it. to go and and maybe do like a little competition shooting with oh, you boy. and kind of show you my I world. I am so far from that, Maggie. Uh, like, you need to give me like a pacifier and a diaper of shooting, basically, because uh, I'm like no. a baby. I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. But then you're gonna take me out hunting yes. afterwards. And I was yeah. saying earlier, I was like, man, I, I, I like because I'm looking at all like all the rifles here for myself, and I'm like, okay, what do I need to order next? Yeah. So I mean, I would love it if you would kind of maybe walk me through like the perfect Guns. like you know hunting rifle setup and get that going for me well, like it depends what you're hunting maggie well then we'll have <laughs> I, to pick some things the problem for me is, is i switch my guns around like constantly depending yeah. on the species i'm hunting or the terrain yeah. i'm hunting in like um i love our ruger american with the magpul stock it is a sexy looking gun mm-hmm. like it looks good it's got the adjustable cheek comb adjustable length of pull it's a great looking gun it's kind of heavy yeah, yeah if i'm doing a lot of walking it's a little heavy. You mm-hmm. might want to just run with the regular Ruger American with the old traditional polymer stock there. Yeah. And just, it's a lot lighter gun. It's a six pound gun without the optic versus the other one, which I think is over seven something pounds. So what so. you're telling me is that I need at least two. Well, you have to have a couple because we have to have multiple <laughs> calibers too, <laughs> right? Maybe three or four. <laughs> this I is know. where it becomes a uh, you know. see, this, this goes back to me with competition. Yeah. I'm like, no, I can't well, tell you no. the perfect then, gun. Like, know, no. We're going to have to you know, look at other calibers and then what are uh, we going for, species specific. Yeah. And um, so, you know, if I'm hiking, I'm going to pick a different rifle than if I'm sitting a lot yeah. or if I'm shooting um, close range. So, you know, you might want to take out one of the new uh, Marlin 4570s uh-huh. if you're doing some close range deer hunting. Or pig hunting yeah. or versus if you're sh- coming out west to Wyoming and hunting where we need to shoot, yeah. you know, three, four hundred yards, you know. So um, it just depends. It all depends. It's just like with pistol shooting. Yeah. You know, we just, uh, you know, we have so many beautiful platforms that Ruger manufactures. And to such great tolerances, I mean, our firearms shoot so well. They outperform anything that I have capability wise, mm-hmm. especially with my optic and ammo combination. And so that's what I love about our guns is they're affordable. Um, they're rugged. They're reliable. Yeah, yeah. But they're they're so they're so consistent with especially the Ruger American. Like yeah. that thing flat shoots. That's just a tried and <laughs> tried true. Tried and true. And the everybody action loves is incredible. It. The, everybody the loves Ruger it. Precision Rifles action is built kind of off of the American action. Mm-hmm. It is an accurate little rifle. It's so price point driven. I mean, there's if you look on the Ruger wall booth in here, I'm I'm walking off the mountain with a world class uh, doll sheep, and I took my Ruger American. It, uh-huh. The rifle retails under five hundred dollars, and that gun flat shoots. How like, hard was that hunt? Well, it's just First physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just physical. I mean, it's it's so how many climbs can you make with mm-hmm. how much weight on your back? Yeah. So I try to keep my pack when I start. 40 to 45 pounds, uh-huh. because then you add water and you add um, your rifle and and, and spotting scope. Uh-huh. You know, you by the time you top out your 55 to 60 pounds Mm -hmm. is how how many climbs do you have in you how long can you endure that and and that's the biggest part about sheep hunting is is just the endurance mental physical endurance yeah i actually just got a weighted vest um for for that kind of purpose i was i had a backpack beforehand i was putting weight in the backpack i I do that but the vest because sometimes even in competition we're carrying a lot of gear but specifically in hunting when you have to pack things in and out so i'll incorporate that as Mm -hmm. well into my training of like, okay, I'm going to do three miles today or five miles today, but I'm carrying 20 pounds, Yeah, you know, and just do it. Yeah, the backpack ruck is super popular kind of for that reason, Mm -hmm. just to start training your body. And I've been, um, you know, doing leg workouts with a lot more weight on my Uh like dumbbells, on my squats and lunges because... um, that's that's what's pushing me up the hill, right? Like you're powered by quads, literally. Yeah. But yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So that's um, we're gonna shoot competition. We're gonna, we're gonna, gonna go this. hunting. Well, you're gonna move to Wyoming <laughs> first, okay? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Poor Maggie. She's like, 
Christy, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking. No, it's good. You, you would actually like it there. Um, mm-hmm. It's a beautiful state. And, um, you know, that's the thing. Wyoming, we, we want people to live in Wyoming that love Second Amendment, yes. love hunting, yeah. and, and love shooting sports because it's a really shooting sports-friendly state. Yeah. Second Amendment, sanctuary, constitutional carry, right to hunt and fish. Uh-huh. But it's windy, so you guys don't move there. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what's so Teasing. funny? We did. I did a Governor's Cup, um, a three-gun competition that mm-hmm. was uh, that was hosted by the governor. I mean, super yes. gun-friendly state, yes. and and just love people yeah. coming and visiting yeah. and enjoying the great outdoors. So, and if you love the outdoors, if you love hiking, I mean, it's it's spectacular. Mm-hmm. Like where we just bought a place, like there's no humans around. Uh-huh. Like as far as your eyes can see, you do not see. A human. You don't uh-huh. see people. You don't see anything. And it's just beautiful. You're just out there immersed in this wild landscape. And, um, you know, my heart thrives on that. I yeah, love it. So yeah. it's it's heaven for me. Um, and we would love to have you out there. So, um, <laughs> But just to remind everybody, you mm-hmm. guys can find Maggie on Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. What's your handle again on, on Instagram? Maggie Reese Shooting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, we hope you guys follow her there. If you like this podcast, I invite you all to like, share, subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about it. Tell your friends to follow Maggie. Tell your friends to follow me. <laughs> and uh, we really appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Wild Nud Cut podcast coming at you from the NRA convention at the Ruger booth yes. with Team Ruger Shooter <laughs> Maggie Reese Voigt. Thank you so much, Maggie, for Thank you so making much. time out of the busy weekend and uh, talking to our listeners and viewers. I know. I'm, I'm excited for us to do stuff coming yes. up. Mm-hmm. We're going to plan it. It's, we're doing it this week. We're making plans. <laughs> so you guys stay tuned for more. <laughs> There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. They are ensuring that we are represented in Washington, D.C. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.